When this girl goes back to the jungle to meet the gorillas she grew up with as a child, she is afraid they won't recognize her 12 years after their last goodbye. Just watch what they do to her. Tansy's phone buzzed late at night. The message was urgent. Jalta and Bims, the gorillas she grew up with, were in grave danger in Central Africa. The message hinted at a mysterious illness, possibly spread by human contact, potentially by rebels. Her heart raced as she read the details. There was no time to waste. She needed to get the first plane to Central Africa, find them, and save them from whatever danger was threatening to take them away from her forever. The bond she shared with these gorillas was unbreakable because she had shared her childhood with them. Tansy Aspinall spent her earliest years not in the typical playgrounds and parks of England, but in the lush, sprawling grounds of Howlett's Wild Animal Park in Kent. The park was managed by her family's charity, the Aspinall Foundation. It was dedicated to the rehabilitation and reintroduction of gorillas into their native habitats in Central Africa. From a young age, Tansy was immersed in a world where gorillas were not just animals, but members of an extended family. Among them, Jalta and Bim stood out. They were born in captivity at Howlett's and quickly formed a unique bond with Tansy. The Aspinall Foundation was built on a vision of wildlife conservation in the belief that animals should live freely in their natural environments. Over the years, the Foundation had made significant strides in this mission. They successfully released numerous gorillas back into the wild. Jalta and Bims were part of this noble endeavor. In 2003, when Tansy was still a young girl, the gorillas were released into the forests of Gabon, West Africa. The release was a momentous occasion, and it marked a significant milestone in the Foundation's efforts. Tansy was sad to see them go, but she understood the importance of their journey. Growing up, she remained deeply involved in her family's work. She accompanied her father, Damien Aspinall, on various trips to Africa and she learned all she could about the intricacies of wildlife conservation. These experiences only strengthened her bond with Jalta and Bims. Every visit to Gabon was a reunion filled with joy and a reminder of the deep connection they shared. The bond between Tanzi and the gorillas was extraordinary. Jalta and Bims never forgot her. They responded to her voice and recognized her scent. They always greeted her with the same warmth and affection they had shown when they were young. These reunions were magical, but now it had been 12 years since their last encounter and she wasn't sure how they would react to her presence, especially because they had every reason not to trust humans anymore. The Aspinall Foundation faced numerous challenges, from poaching to habitat destruction. The gorillas were among the most threatened species, but their successes in protecting them were undeniable. For Tansy, it was personal. As she grew older, her involvement in the Foundation deepened. She took on more responsibilities, driven by a passion to continue her family's legacy. Her love for Jalta and Bims, and for all the other gorillas they had helped, ruled her world. Now, years later, that bond was being tested in an unimaginable way. The urgent message about Jalta and Bims's illness struck a chord deep within her. The thought of them suffering was unbearable. She knew she had to act quickly and draw on everything she had learned. The journey ahead would be perilous, but Tansy was determined to do whatever it took to save her beloved gorillas. The message that jolted Tansy awake was brief but alarming. It came from one of the field researchers stationed in Gabon. This was where Jalta and Bims had been thriving for years. Urgent, Jalta and Bims are gravely ill. Symptoms suggest disease transmitted by human contact, possibly by rebels immediate help needed. Tanzi's heart sank as she read it. What kind of disease? How did it spread to them? Were the gorillas in immediate danger of losing their lives? She knew she had to act. Her first call was to her father, Damien. He listened intently as she relayed the details. We need to go, she insisted. Flights were booked and essential medical supplies were gathered. The dangers of traveling to Central Africa, especially near regions with rebel activity, were well known but neither Tansy nor Damien hesitated. The gorillas' lives were at stake. The plane landed in Gabon. Tansy and Damien started their journey through the dense jungle a few hours later. The lush greenery seemed to close in around them. When they finally arrived at the camp, Dr. Chloe Raynaud greeted them. We've been struggling to keep things under control, she said. It's good you're here. Tansy and Damien followed Dr. Raynaud to the medical tent. There, the sight of Jalta and Bim stopped Tansy in her tracks. 
She hadn't seen them in more than a decade, and she hadn't been prepared to find them like this. The gorillas lay listlessly on the ground. Their eyes were dull and glazed with pain. Dr. Reno quickly explained the situation. The disease is severe. We believe it was transmitted by humans, likely the rebels who have been moving through the area. It's a respiratory illness, and it's spreading fast. Tansy knelt beside Jalta and gently stroked his fur. His labored breathing and occasional cough were heartbreaking. Bims was lying nearby in a similar state. The urgency of their situation was clear. We need more medical supplies and medical support, Dr. Raynal continued. The local team has been incredible, but we're stretched thin. We've sent out requests for help, but it's a race against time. Dr. Reno outlined their immediate needs. They needed more antibiotics, respiratory support equipment, and additional medical personnel. Tansy and Damien quickly formulated a plan. They would split up. Damien would coordinate with local authorities and international aid organizations. Tansy stayed at the camp to assist with the gorilla's care. As Damien left to gather resources, Tansy immersed herself in the task at hand. The local team was exhausted but determined. They welcomed her help. Together, they worked around the clock. Tansy administered medications and monitored the gorilla's vitals, but despite their best efforts, the situation remained critical. The disease was relentless and the gorilla's conditions fluctuated unpredictably. Every cough, every labored breath felt like a blow to her heart for Tansy. The limited resources at the camp were a constant source of frustration. Supplies were scarce and the makeshift medical equipment barely sufficed for the gorilla's needs. Tansy and the local team improvised as best they could. They repurposed items, created makeshift IV stands from tree branches, and used every drop of medicine sparingly. The jungle itself posed a significant challenge too. The terrain was rugged and unforgiving. Navigating through dense undergrowth and muddy paths to fetch water or collect herbs for traditional remedies was physically exhausting. Tansy often returned to the camp with scrapes and bruises. Each morning began before dawn. Tansy's body would still ache from the previous day's exertions, but she'd head straight to the medical tent. Some days, the gorilla's breathing seemed less labored and their eyes a bit more alert. On other days, they seemed to regress and Tansy's spirit would plummet. The threat of rebel activity added an ever-present layer of danger. Reports of nearby skirmishes and sightings of armed groups kept the camp on high alert. One day, as Tansy was dressing a wound of a silverback, the gorilla burst out yelling at the top of his lungs, his rage directed toward the tall trees in the distance. The whole camp shook with fear and Tansy herself almost fainted in shock, but nothing came out of the trees and the gorilla soon calmed down. Tansy was terrified, but she mustered a smile for her colleague's sake. Her calm demeanor and unwavering focus inspired the rest of the team. She coordinated daily briefings with Dr. Reno and the local caregivers to ensure everyone was aware of their roles and any updates on the gorilla's condition. They worked in shifts. Each person was allowed a few precious hours of rest each day, but Tansy often pushed herself to the limit and worked long into the night. Just when their exhaustion seemed insurmountable and hope began to wane, a faint sound broke through the dense jungle air. It was the rhythmic thud of helicopter blades. At first, Tansy thought it might be the rebels, but as the sound grew closer, she saw the emblem of an international conservation organization on the side of the chopper. The chopper touched down in a clearing near the camp, kicking up a whirlwind of dust and leaves. Tansy shielded her eyes. A group of people, dressed in clean uniforms and carrying advanced medical equipment, emerged from the helicopter. Leading the team was Dr. Michael Anderson. He was a renowned wildlife veterinarian known for his work with endangered species. He approached Tansy with a warm, reassuring smile. We heard about the situation and came as quickly as we could, he said. We've brought supplies and specialists to help. Tansy felt a wave of relief wash over her. The arrival of Dr. Anderson and his team was like a lifeline. They had the expertise and resources that were desperately needed. The new team quickly set up a makeshift medical center. Their efficiency and organization were in stark contrast to the frantic improvisation Tansy and the local team had been forced to adopt. Advanced medical supplies were unloaded. This included ventilators, intravenous fluids, and a range of medications. The sight of the equipment filled Tansy with renewed hope. Dr. Anderson and his specialists immediately assessed Jalta and Bims. 
They ran tests, took blood samples, and set up the advanced medical equipment. Tansy watched closely. The atmosphere in the camp shifted from one of desperation to one of focused determination. As the new team worked, Dr. Anderson explained their approach. We're dealing with a severe respiratory infection. Our goal is to stabilize their breathing and support their immune systems while we treat the infection and find out what caused it. Tansy nodded and absorbed the information. The level of care being provided was far beyond what they had been able to manage before. The ventilators helped ease the gorilla's labored breathing, and the intravenous fluids ensured they stayed hydrated and nourished. Over the next few days, the camp buzzed with activity. The combination of advanced medical care and the relentless dedication of both the original team and the new arrivals began to show results. Jalta's breathing grew more regular and Bim started to regain some of his strength. The improvements were small but significant. For the first time since she had arrived, Tansy allowed herself to believe that they might actually save the gorillas. Each day brought new challenges. The jungle's humidity and heat were relentless. It made the medical tent stifling and uncomfortable. Despite the advanced equipment, resources were still limited. The team had to improvise and adapt constantly. The threat of rebel attacks was always in the back of everyone's mind, but somehow they remained focused on their mission. Tansy's hands-on involvement was crucial. She administered medications, checked IV lines, and comforted the gorillas as best she could. But her growing desperation was evident in her every action. The sight of Jalta and Bim struggling to breathe was a constant reminder of the stakes. Despite the setbacks, there were glimmers of hope. Bim showed signs of improvement. His strength was slowly returning, and he began to take an interest in his surroundings again. Tansy found solace in these small victories, but her body ached and she felt the weight of exhaustion pressing down on her. Sleep was a luxury she couldn't afford, and meals were often skipped in favor of tending to the gorillas. One afternoon, as Tansy was checking Bims's IV line, he reached out and gently touched her arm. The gesture was weak but deliberate. It was the first sign of recognition and connection after 12 years. Tears welled up in Tansy's eyes as she smiled at him. The small signs of improvement fueled her determination. She clung to every positive change. The fight against time was grueling, but the glimmers of hope kept the team pushing forward. As the days became weeks, the gorilla's condition continued to improve. Their breathing became more regular, their strength returned, and their eyes regained the sparkle that Tansy remembered from her childhood. Each step forward was a victory. While reviewing the latest test results, Dr. Anderson called Tansy over. We've made a breakthrough, he said, pointing to the data. The disease appears to be a novel strain of a respiratory infection. We've traced its origins to increased human activity in the area. Tansy's heart sank as she processed the implications. What they had feared was now evident. The disease was brought in by humans. Dr. Anderson nodded. Yes, but it's more specific than that. It seems the outbreak was caused by illegal mining activities in the region. These operations have led to increased contact between humans and wildlife. It spread pathogens that wouldn't normally affect gorillas. The revelation hit Tansy hard. The thought of Jalta and Bim suffering because of human greed and recklessness was infuriating. Dr. Anderson continued, This incident highlights the broader issue of human encroachment on wildlife habitats. We need to raise awareness and push for stricter protections. The team's focus expanded to address the root cause of the outbreak. They documented their findings meticulously and prepared reports to present to international conservation organizations and governments. The goal was to spark a campaign to protect wildlife from the devastating impacts of illegal mining and other harmful activities. News of the gorillas' recovery and the cause of their illness spread quickly. Interviews and articles highlighted the connection between human actions and the health of wildlife and brought the issue to the forefront of public consciousness. The turning point came with an influential environmental organization picked up the story. They launched a global campaign to combat illegal mining and protect critical wildlife habitats. Petitions were circulated, fundraisers were organized, and awareness events were held in major cities around the world. But the biggest result came in the form of a squeezed hand. One night, as Tansy was keeping watch over Jalta and Bims, sleep caught up with her, and she almost dozed off with her face in a muddy puddle. But just before she could collapse on the ground, she felt something squeeze both her hands. 
Her eyes jolted open and her heart skipped a beat when she realized that Jolta was holding her hands, each one on one side. He was standing up and his eyes were more alert than they'd ever been since she returned to Gabon. And when her own eyes filled with tears, something amazing happened. Jolta gently dried her eyes with his massive hands, cuddling against her to offer comfort just like he'd done countless times when she was just a child. At that moment, Tansy's heart almost burst with happiness and love. She'd made it. She had saved him, and he'd recognized her after all these years as his friend who'd never forgotten him. A month later, the sun filtered through the dense canopy of the Gabonese jungle. Tansy stood at the edge of the tree line. After weeks of relentless effort and countless sleepless nights, the moment she had been longing for had finally arrived. Jalta and Bims were now fully recovered, and they were about to be reintroduced to their natural habitat. The once weak gorillas now moved with their former strength and grace. As they stepped into the clearing, Tanzi's eyes filled with tears. She watched as Jalta and Bim surveyed their surroundings. It was a sight that she had feared she might never see again. With cautious steps, Tanzi approached them. Jalta was the first to acknowledge her. He let out a soft, familiar grunt. Bims quickly followed suit. They moved towards her. Their massive frames dwarfed her small figure. Tansy extended her hand. Jalta reached out and gently took it. Bims followed suit. Tansy felt a profound sense of connection and gratitude. They had made it through the darkest of times, and their bond was stronger than ever. You did it, she whispered. You're strong and healthy again. The international campaign sparked by their ordeal had led to significant changes. Stricter regulations on illegal mining were being enforced and new conservation efforts were underway. Awareness about the impact of human activities on wildlife reached new heights. Tansy knew that their fight was far from over, but the progress made was heartening. The collective efforts of individuals, organizations, and governments had created a ripple effect of positive change. The crisis had turned into an opportunity to protect not just Jalta and Bims, but countless other creatures at risk. Do you have a story about someone who put in relentless effort to save a wild animal? Tell us about it in the comments. We'd love to hear. For now though, we're out of here. Catch you in the next video.